Okay, this video uses um, Jupyter Notebook. It uses Python with Jupyter Notebook. If you don't have that set up, I have another video which shows you how to set it up on your uh, computer. But I've started a new uh, Jupyter Notebook page in Python, and then we can type commands and run it. And it'll, in this case, it'll print out some stuff to the screen that we can see, and I'll walk you through that. And also, it'll create a data file because that's what this program does. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Python to solve a data handling problem. So in this program that I use, you get uh, data. It's an experiment, and you get data output in an individual file for each person. So these are all the people that have participated thus far. And so for analysis, that's no good because the data is in an individual file. What we want is we want a composite data file. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a program in Python, or I have a program in Python, I'm going to break it down for you, to um, merge all of these data files together. So let me click on this so you can sort of see all the information that's in the file, and I'll explain a little bit about what we're going to do here. So you have um, data in columns and in rows, and this is sort of a user code number, subject identification number, and so on, all these kinds of variables. Now in this study, there was an encoding phase. It's a memory test. There's an encoding phase. There was a training phase where they got feedback. So you can see sort of the feedback there. And then there was a test phase. So I'm really only interested in what happened during this test phase. And what you can see here is trial by trial information about what the item was, what they called it, and whether the prime was a match or a mismatch. So that's great trial by trial information. But what we're going to do is we're going to have the program go through and count up like all the old items called old, all the new items called new, etc. Figure that out for us, figure out the proportion, figure out the reaction times, and just report back the composite data for that particular subject and put it all in a data file where you can sort of uh, see the group data and then that will be ready for analysis in your favorite statistical package. And so here's the sort of the group file. I'll show you what it looks like, the composite file. So you have the subject identification number, whether they, what group they were in. So there are two groups here. Either they were randomly assigned to either be in a reverse condition or a control condition. And then they, everybody had exposure to matched primes or mismatched primes. And then you have old called old as a hit, old called new as a miss, uh, new called new as correct rejection, and new called old as false alarms. And you have that for both prime types. And so these would be the proportions of those. And so, you know, these two are going to sum to one, these two are going to sum to one, and so on. And then these are the reaction times for those individual items. So that we can analyze. So this we can analyze uh, using, um, well, I use R now, but using R in this uh, data set. So that's where we want to get our data. But how do we go, how do we use Python to composite and, and uh, read each one of these files and create a composite file? So here's the program that I have which will do this. And you can look all of this stuff up. The nice thing about Python is it's open source. And so all of these commands you can look up. And this is just one example of how they would work. And I'll show you a, 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 few, a few key things that I learned when doing this. So the first thing you're going to do is import CSV. These are comma delimited CSV files. Python can read that, work with it, and output it. And if you look that up, you'll see that there's a particular syntax. So you can open the data file, and here's the data file name, or what I'm doing in this particular command is creating the composite data file. So this is the composite data file name I'm writing out, and what I'm doing here, and I'm writing it out as this just a placeholder name, out file, and what I'm creating is the um, column heading names that go in there, the variable names. So there will be a name for sub ID, group, prime, item, proportion, and reaction time. So those are the things that you saw in that uh, composite data file. These, this is where they sort of get created. Uh, this is a writer command that will write out those um, field names. It's called field names, and it's going to equal these, this just placeholder name here, O field names. So to put those in, it will write the header. That's all it's doing in this command is just creating that file and writing it out. So that's sort of the first thing to do is to create that file because what we're going to do is loop through each individual file 
you're only going to want to write the header one time at the very top of the file, and then you're just going to write data from there on out. So that's what that command does. Now you'll notice a little something here. There's two of these backslashes here for the F, and it's because Python has this thing called F strings. And if you don't have these double slashes, so this drove me crazy for a while. Let me show you what happens. So I'm going to scroll down here to uh, this. And so let me show you what happens if you don't have those two slashes. So here's a command. I just created a, a fake name. So the directory here is fluency train because you're in this experiment. I'm training people to use fluency as a marker for either being old or new. And, um, and then each file has this prefix to it subject identification number and then uh, trailing zeros and one there that's created by the the online software that we use so this is like one of the um, uh, let's just suppose that this is one of our data file names and I'm going to show you what it looks like so if you if you run it well you can sort of see what happens here the slash mark is lost and the F is lost so it sort of just disappears and devolves into one big long string that of course it's looking for this file that doesn't exist. So the way to fix that is you just put in the two before each one, you put in the two slashes and it will counterman that and you get your uh, data which is stored in this C data fluency train directory. That's the command you want with this particular file name. So that's why that's in there. That It's only true, you only need that for the slash F begin because they have, I think it's related to, they have this uh, F strings command that you can uh, search for in Python. Uh, if it would started with any other letter, you wouldn't need the double slash there. Uh, like here, you can sort of see there, uh, only have the single slash. Okay, so that's the sort of the first little bit there. Then what I'm doing in this next command here is just creating a, uh, an array called subject. It's gonna hold in our subject numbers. And as I have in the um, commented out here, this is going to read the subject numbers I put in a separate CSV file so that each time I add data, I just add a subject number. I can run this program and it'll create a new output file with everybody's data in it. So that's kind of nice. So let me show you that real quick. So here are the subject identification numbers. Essentially, you just list them in order. Here's the numbers. And it's going to use this information to open up the uh, particular data file with this embedded in the name and I'll show you that in the program here. So uh, that's the first thing it's going to do and it's going to read and what it does is it appends the subject array with a uh, line here and the line is the what it's read in that file or the subject number gets appended there. Here I'm creating some arrays so there's two types of primes in this study. So there are um, match primes, so that's called P item. And then we're gonna have a reaction time for each one of those. And then we have mismatch primes and those control items. So that's C item and reaction times for each one of those. So we're just creating a clear array here that has four spots in it. And it has four spots in it because you have hits, misses, correct rejections, and false alarms. And so we're gonna have a proportion for each one of those and we're going to have a reaction time for each one of those. So you would need four for each one of those. So you can just sort of do this. You could also do zero comma zero comma zero comma zero with four zeros in there, or you could just do this notation this way. Now the next thing I'm doing here in the sub subject name is I'm um, the subject is an array. And in the array, it'll have a bracket and a number. And what you want to do is use the number but ditch the brackets. So this command here will strip off the brackets and any uh, quotation marks out of that and remove or return just the number. So the number will sort of come out here. You'll see this in the program and it'll come out and embed it in this string. It makes the number a string so that you can put it into the file name. So you can look at these commands, you can look up these commands and sort of see what it's doing there. It's gonna print to the screen what the file name is and then it's gonna open up that file name. So it's gonna read it in and it's gonna read in the header and these file, these uh, commands you can find in uh, Python, and it'll read it in a line at a time. Now let me show you what, what that looks like. It will read, uh, Python reads it in one line at a time, and it can loop right through it if you want to. So down here I sort of have uh, the first file name. It's going to print to the screen this file name, and I'll just manually pr printed it in there, 
and then it's going to read it and it'll print out just the header so you can sort of see just what the header looks like. So what this little bit of code is going to do is it's going to open up this file name and I've just manually put the name in here. It'll print it out to the screen as you can see down here and then it's going to print the header so you can sort of see what the header looks like when it gets read in. So when you click that and you run it, so here's the header. These are all of the fields that were in one of those data files. Remember when I opened it up, opened it, up it had a user code, uh, external ID, module ID, all of this stuff has sort of come, many of these fields come automatically from the program that we're using. I had control over some of the, some of them, but not all of them. And they, it's just information that's in there, some of which we'll use, some of which we won't. What we'll be using is we'll be using like the given response, like that's what the person um, said, what the session condition was, et cetera, reaction time, all of that stuff that we'll use, we'll use to sort of um, understand or compute our values in it. So that's what the header looks like. Now let's make the header disappear and I'll show you what, what it looks like when you print it out line by line. So you can loop through, so for line in reader, uh, reader is this command right here. So this loop here for line in reader, so it's uh, reader here is using this command here, this DICT reader file, and then the line in reader will loop through uh, the entire file that you have, the entire CSV file. So if you run this, we'll see every line by line, oops, scroll too far. Okay, so what it's gonna do, or what it did, is it printed out line by line. So like here's the first line, here's the user code, the external ID is other, and so on. So you get each one of these variables, each one of those columns, and you get the value that's uh, in each one of those columns for that. Then it'll loop back around and print the next line. So it prints the next line. Uh, some of these don't change, but some of the uh, individual trial information will change. So that's what you get. You get that individual information for each line of data in the file. So we're gonna capitalize on that. Now we're not gonna use necessarily everything, but we capitalize on that uh, in this program. So that's where we are right here. We're reading it. And so you can see I just made an if statement. So if the phase equals the test, then we're interested. So remember earlier in that file, I showed you there was an encoding phase, there was a feedback phase. We can ignore those and focus in on the test phase. So if it's equal to the test phase, then we're gonna do some stuff. So now we just have a series of uh, if statements. So if the probe type is old and the response is old, well, that's a hit. Um, and then if Furthermore, if the prime type is match, we're gonna sort it and put it in this prime. Zero is the first index for that array, and we're gonna add one to it. So we're basically counting it up. How many old items did they see and call old? Uh, and at the same time, we'll start to average the reaction time together. So we basically just add that to our array. We're gonna average it up. We'll divide by the total number at the very end. But right now, we're just summing up the reaction times to eventually uh, form a reaction time for that condition. Now, if the prime type is mismatched, then you're going to put it in the control condition. So basically, we're doing the same thing, but a different array because those are control items, so we keep track of that. Now, these other statements, I just have, I have the conditions for the other items, right? So old called new, uh, new called new, new called old. So those are our item types, right? So that's those are hits, misses, correct rejections, and false alarms, right? So it does that for each one of those. So that's just counting them all up, the computer counting them up, summing up the reaction times. So now what we want to do is we, because we have the sum of the reaction times, we want to convert it into an average reaction time. So we're just going to create a little loop here, and we're going to loop through the reaction time. And we just divide each reaction time by the number of items that are in that. So if you had 10 uh, of a particular condition, you're going to take that sum reaction time divided by 10 and so on. And then we're going to increment X and loop, continue to loop through that uh, array. This is a really nice sort of feature in it. Whatever the size of the array is, um, Python does it. So we do the same thing for the um, control reaction times as well. So we divide those. Then the next thing we need to do is convert through and, and turn our counts into proportions. So it's our raw counts. There was a total number of 20 items here. So if you had 10 out of 20, that's 0.5, right? So we're gonna do the same thing there. Now we have the information that we want. We're gonna print it out to the screen. So this 
parents the uh, subject identification number, the condition that they were in, then it's going to tell you the, that it's primed and creates hits. So the P item 0 is hits, 1 is miss, 2 is correct rejection, and 3 is false alarms. The same for the control items and the same matching for the response times. This is just the index of the array. Python indexes start it, starts to index at 0, uh, and we have you know, four slots here, so it goes 0 to 3. Okay. So it'll print the information on the screen. Then it's going to do the same thing. It'll pr print the information to the file, but then it'll print to the screen this little dotted line so you can see sort of the next subject. So to write to the file, we're going to write, and now we open up, and we the A here means we're going to append. Remember, we created this file in the first statement. Now it's going to append to it. So that means it'll keep whatever data is in there and add to that. And uh, again, here are the f we're putting in the, the field names uh, and we're uh, writing out each one of the um, field names and we're writing out uh, each one of the, the items that they are. So uh, we have sub ID, we're putting in this, uh, the subject name the group is this variable called session condition and it, the line here is because remember we're looping through the file and the line is just used as a designation to sort of indicate that particular line and then this variable so session condition for that particular line uh, and then you have uh, the prime and whether well, we're putting in the matches first then we'll put the mismatches and then we have the items, and I set all of these, so I'm going to do hits first, misses, correct rejection, false alarms, and then proportions, right? And then the actual value that's in that array, and then you have the reaction times, and then the value that's in that array. So this is just syntax, that's what it's going to print. So for each subject, it'll pre present, or write, I should say, it'll write these chunks of data out to our out file, and then it's going to loop through. So it's doing this. It'll loop through for however many subject uh, ones that we have. So how many ever subjects we have in our data file, right? So it'll do it over and over and over again. And this is the output that you get. So it looped through, and it did this subject first. Then it did this subject, this subject. Now, when I was writing this program, I just worked with one subject till I made sure that all the values were right. I hand-checked those values. Uh, then I just created the loop at the end, and you just sort of loop through, and once you're assured that it's working for one subject, it'll work for all the other subjects. And then it just loops through, and it'll do all those subjects, and it'll dump them out into that file that you saw there. So that's pretty simple. When you think about it, you have this line of this, these lines of code accomplish that particular task. Now, the cool thing is once that's written, all I have to do when I gather more data to create the data files, just add to that subject file name, that's it. And also, once you write this, you can basically take this existing code and customize it for other operations. So that's how you do that for this particular uh, problem.